starting this movie with a flashback under the guise that I'm going to learn something, but given the way the previous film showed me things that happened in the past, I'm sure I will learn very little. Wicked, because YA stories refuse to think teens are capable of understanding subtlety or moral ambiguity. And why do they feel the need to have these heavily armed guards in the car with all these children? Thomas has a flashback to the first scene of the last movie, during the first scene of this movie, to remind us how ambiguous the first movie was and how ambiguous this one will be. Thomas is an unbelievably heavy sleeper, unless he's about to see something revealing in a flashback. How is there not a helipad on the top of this f***ing building? I guess the movie needed as many opportunities as possible for Thomas to barely make it through a closing door. I'm gonna be really pissed off if the culmination of the last movie is just f***ing zombies. I'm no tactician, but maybe they should put a giant pit or some wooden spikes at the bottom of the hill these zombie creatures roll down so easily. Right now, all you have is a slide leading directly to the helipad. See what I told you about the door? I'm the reason you're all still alive. In a movie that is so desperate to surprise, casting Peter Baelish as the first person these main characters see is a huge tell that these are actually the bad guys. Also, humanity may be dying, but Littlefinger still has access to the gap. You can call me Mr. Jansen. What? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, because we were walking through a factory that manufactures sparks. I mean, you taking us home? A home of sorts. We are almost five minutes into this movie, and we are already playing the non-answer game. Started to think no one actually knows what's going on. Hunky lead character is seen taking a shower with the water hitting the back of his neck cliche. Calcium, folate, vitamins A through Z, pretty much everything you've been deprived of out there. I don't think this guy is a real doctor, because he doesn't know that vitamins end at K. Thomas, thank you for seeing me. Thomas has no choice. He is clearly locked in that room. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Jansen apologized for the inconvenience, even though Thomas is basically a prisoner, and the whole world is destroyed, so I would imagine his schedule is pretty open. He's not late for brunch. Which side are you on? I remember I used to work for Wicked. I remember that they sent me into the maze. I remember watching my friends die in front of me. Thomas has a lot of confidence in the context of the blurry images he saw in his sleep during the first movie. We weren't the only maze. So that monstrosity that they were running around in the first movie was just one of many? This has to be the absolute worst return on investment since the fleet of quadcopter battleships from the Avengers. That kid over there has been here the longest. Almost a week. I literally laughed out loud. Almost a week, huh? Why are they talking about him like he's f***ing Brooks from Shawshank? Also, he's clearly the most depressed. I bet his maze was full of hot girls. His maze was nothing but girls. Really? Why didn't we get to follow him around the first movie? Connor, Allison, and Abigail. Even with the teen population seriously diminished, I bet there are multiple Connors, Allisons, and Abigails in that room. Where are they going? Far from here. Just say you don't know, dude. No, if there's one thing I know about that girl, she can take care of herself. Old declaration, considering the interactions they've had in the ten days he's been aware of her existence. Does trying to sleep with a light shining right in your face count as a scorch trial? How is Thomas able to wake up for this? But he was able to partially sleep through a helicopter basically landing in a war zone earlier in the movie. Hot tip for everyone building secret isolation layers, don't make your vents human-sized. I understand he's been here the longest, but is a week really enough time for this kid to learn how to navigate the HVAC in this very large, complicated building? You can tell he's at the end of the tunnel because the vent lighting conveniently changed from blue to red. This is as far as we've ever gotten. The vents don't even go into that section. It's almost like the architect knew there would be gradual revelations as some sort of movie occurred in the building. There's something weird going on here. I know you think so too. It's weirder that everyone but Thomas and Eris just blindly accept their environment, whether it's a giant maze that has no purpose or a literal prison. Guy in charge just happens to show up right as the fight starts cliche. Are they just sitting in the cafeteria most of the day and then going back to their bunks when it's time for bed? Or are we just not seeing the tests? And what more do they need to know? Why haven't they already Matrix style sedated and strung up all these kids to harvest their blah blahs to cure the blah? Yes, Eris, just slam that bench shut. That way they will know where you are, and you will ensure no means of escape. I guess no one is watching this security camera that is right fing behind them. Teresa? Nope, it's just some other girl that came out of the same factory where they made Kristen Stewart, Teresa Palmer, and Jenna Malone. It's Rachel. Out of all the girls hanging in this room, Thomas mistakes a girl for Teresa that Eris actually knows, then becomes visibly relieved that it's not Teresa, creating this unnecessarily awkward moment. Futuristic video chat is in the room with all the sedated, hanging young adults, instead of in a more logical place, like an office or conference room. Only so Thomas and Eris can find out what we, the viewer, already know. Whatever it is you've been doing to the men there, it's working. Even though Jansen is second in command in this organization, he has no idea what the maze is actually for. And if he doesn't know, I'm not sure anyone does, including the people who wrote this movie. We are still running tests. Currently, they are running the sit in a cafeteria test. I am assuring you, the assets are secure. Unless they discover our volatile HVAC system. Yeah, about that. Remember when they first jumped down from the air duct? Look how f***ing high that is from floor to the ceiling. And then Eris closes the vent, which means these assholes who were in a hurry managed to jump back into the air duct somehow in a circus stunt that I definitely would pay to see over this movie any day. She's still alive. Who's she? Yeah, exactly. Thomas plays the pronoun game so that everyone has to ask who the f*** she is. Thomas made a pretty comfortable barricade, but I'm not sure it will be very effective. Somehow, everyone got out of this room before Jansen got here, which means that Thomas and Eris jumped back into the air vents, crawled all the way back, started barricading the door, and still escaped before Jansen could make a simple walk to their room. He's shooting at us! I'm glad this kid is here, or we would have no idea that the guards were shooting at them. Ah! 
Mino channels Thomas and makes a terrible decision that miraculously works in his favor. Lightweight objects like small aluminum tables and blankets make excellent barricades in this movie. It's a stun gun rather than a murder gun, thus ensuring our heroes stay morally on the up and up. The maze is one thing, but you kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. Love these evocative names for dangerous habitats. If you make it past scorch, there's no way you can survive the big gulp. And if you make it past that, good luck with the stabber. Yeah, let me guess, Wicked is good? <sighs> Thomas has no more ammo, yet no one is shooting at him. They're all just moving forward with their shields up, like he can still shoot at them. Maybe they're protecting themselves from a potential knee to the groin from Mimo. How many slowly sliding doors can Thomas Indiana Jones his way through? Looks like we got a badass over here. There are no other guards outside on the other side of that door or lining the perimeter of the building, allowing Thomas and friends to escape without any problem. Their plan is to outrun the guards equipped with masks, eye protection, and four-wheelers. And it's working! There is no way! Stop! Going there. Stay out here in this blinding storm! Where the hell are we? I've been wondering this for 1.25 movies. There's something inside of us that we could want. Something in our blood. Yeah, something f***ing blue! In all fairness to the subtly named Wicked, that's pretty unusual. Well, we followed you out here, Thomas, and now you're saying that you have no idea where we're going or what we're doing. Did Newt really think Thomas has a plan? Given the fact that he's never had a plan, he's just fumbled into the right choice at every turn, Newt should just be happy that Wicked isn't going to harvest light blue liquid out of his body that will kill him for some reason. All those kids that we left behind back there... I don't want to end up like that. For a moment there, it seemed like Minho was going to experience remorse about leaving the others behind, but no, he's just a selfish asshole. How long into a futuristic nightmare dystopia do you think it is before people start doing weird shit with mannequins? Two years? Eight months? Three days? This is the first boner hurt moment in this entire series? I don't think so. And why is he all aroused by her putting on more clothes? This kid forgot how to teenage boy. Where'd you go? Characters are so accustomed to not getting their questions answered, they are asking questions to photographs. This looks promising. I know you don't want Wicked to find you, so why would turning on the abandoned colony's power, drawing attention to yourselves, be a good idea? <laughs> it's another fucking zombie movie, people. We gotta move, gotta move! So were all the cranks here just chilling in the wings, not worried about these two delicious guys walking by until they turn the lights on? Too bad he didn't have a blanket, dorm room mattress, or small aluminum table. Look at this desolate wasteland. Even the malls are boarded up and abandoned. Just like today. Stealing scenes from great movies like Fellowship of the Ring isn't going to help you, movie. Especially if you steal a scene that didn't really make sense in the original movie, either. So I'm supposed to believe that they're going to lose the dozens of cranks chasing them by ducking into a small exposed cove, and then being relaxed enough to sleep until sunrise without being discovered? I think we're safe for now. He has no idea, and they should all know it. Are we sure Solar Flares destroyed this city? It looks more like the Avengers were here. Also, is this the exact same destroyed city from motherfucking Insurgent? What the hell happened to this place? Asking questions aloud that no one knows the answer to. Not helpful. It doesn't look like anyone's been here in a long time. They're walking through the Scorch, right? Wouldn't it be hot as balls? They're all wearing jackets. And this guy is so committed to fashion he has on a hipster scarf. Oh, hang on, stop. Thomas's harm's way senses are tingling. They're never gonna stop looking for us. It's only been like, what, 12 hours since they escaped? At least let them search for a day before you become resigned to it. The group continues not to mercy kill Winston. And I remember why we were there. And this kicks off the most annoying scene in recent memory. She says she thinks they should go back. He keeps interrupting her before she can say anything. Then she's about to tell him a big secret, but cuts herself off. And just when he presses her about it, a gunshot rings out that was probably fired by the screenwriter. Don't let me turn into one of those things. Wait, aren't all the millennials supposed to be immune? Yeah, he might die since the cranks tore up his torso, but he wouldn't contract the virus, right? Couldn't they use this gun at some point? Isn't this the only gun? And they're just gonna leave it with the guy who wants to kill himself? I thought we were supposed to be immune. Not all of us. When the screenwriters wrote this scene, they forgot that all the kids were supposed to be immune. But instead of rewriting the parts where Winston gets sick and dies, they just lazily threw in these two lines. Out of water? Guess I won't be needing this container for potential future water. You see that? It's lights! Thomas seems to be very excited about these lights, even though he's been suspicious of everything else throughout this entire series. Mino survives this. If you get struck by lightning. Oh. This is the most blasé reaction anyone ever had to getting struck by lightning. Totally pointless peril. Also, Mimo says, uh, and not just now, and with no severe burns, I am a god! Who's Jorge? Ah, oh, just some other asshole you have to know in these Hunger Virgin Maze movies. Who's Jorge? You'll see. Why does anyone bother asking any questions in this world? This constant evasive dickishness makes everyone's lives a thousand times more annoying than they already are. You came from Wicked. You're very valuable. I feel like any minute the credits are gonna roll and we're gonna get a sneak preview of next week's episode. What is it with this movie series' obsession with human suspension? In every instance, from them hanging Albie in the maze, to the kids in the lab with the tubes, to this, it has been more trouble than it's worth. Holy sh! that rope was loose. I'm surprised they were able to stay up there for so long. This is the World Catastrophe Kill Zone Department. The word Kill Zone is the K in their acronym for Wicked. Can't wait until they rebrand to Vaccine Initiative, Laceration League, and Intelligence Network. If you're going to blow up a building to a Patsy Cline song, you make damn sure that song is I Fall to Pieces. Follow me! Zipline is a mode of transportation that is best avoided when you are being shot at. 
It's only really effective when you're trying to lure two bumbling criminals out of your attic, so you can just cut the line when they're halfway across. No, we need him! You go around! How does he not already know this? It's why their phasers are set to stun. Even though the explosion only happened in a certain area, it takes the entire building down, excluding this elevator shaft. I guess being immune to the flare makes you immune to any fire-based ailment, including rope burn. Not only do they survive this, neither of them are impaled in the arm or leg by a scrap of metal. You know, paradise, safe from the sun. They keep talking about how the sun is so dangerous, but it doesn't seem any more dangerous than the sun is in real life. I understand that the solar flares destroyed the earth and everything, but that seems to be an isolated incident. Maybe everyone developed exoderma pigmentosum. You, know you ask a lot of questions. In Thomas's defense, no one's ever given him a straight answer for anything in his life. Truth is, I don't really know what he is. He's just always been there. And I've always done what he's asked me to do, no matter how stupid. The word you're looking for is boss. They definitely heard cranks down there, yet they casually walk down this tunnel, not checking their surroundings like they're taking a stroll through Central Park. What the hell is this? I don't know. So let's keep investigating it. What the hell is this? I don't know. If history holds, the third Maze Runner movie is probably just going to be two hours of this exchange over and over. Are these vines emanating from the dead bodies? I guess when the cranks die, they become some sort of fleshy kudzu. You might not like that explanation, but it's far superior to the one the movie did not provide. Ah. F***ing run! Why now? What's so important about this moment that caused these creatures to start appearing? Maybe these creatures have an exclusive appetite for small rodents, which is why they just bite people and don't eat them. It's the only way for them to know what is and isn't a rat. All of that time they spent lollygagging around looking at basically nothing, they could have walked towards the light that Thomas saw and avoided this predicament altogether. Man, the people who made this movie decided to write down all the cliches, rub their hands together and said, our work's half done! Also, weren't they running around in a sewer? How the f*** did they get so high up? Even if it's fallen over, the structural integrity of that building is something to be admired. Even after falling with the force of a, well, 40-story building, it managed to stay completely intact and create a convenient bridge for Thomas and Brenda. Even with severely reduced motor skills, the cranks are excellent climbers. <laughs> gotcha. Then pull her up, mother -fucker. Okay, try to blend in. Saying very loudly that one should try and blend in is a terrible way to try and blend in. A group of kids around our age had a girl with them. I think they might be inside. Let me take a look at my young adult dystopian fiction trust meter for this guy right here. Oops, wait, it's broken. But he's probably okay. So proceed. Even in this dystopian future, this teenage girl is so desperate to go to the party with the cool kids, she succumbs to the peer pressure and drinks the mysterious liquid. This movie is also suddenly a lot like that scene in Percy Jackson when they go into the fake casino. God damn, that movie sucked. What? You're not her. I need somebody who's whiter. Welcome back, you ugly shank. Hey, remember the first movie? So I lure the kids in, they have a good time, and then later, Wicked comes in. They separate the wheat from the chaff. This feels like a hidden PSA advising kids not to go to trippy drug parties thrown by middle-aged dandies. Good advice, frankly. It's all our heroes. Main dude, long hair evasive girl, lightning boy, Jojen Reed, Miss Vitamin D deficiency, steampunk Gus Fring, forgot about that guy, and a should have died a while ago kid. <laughs> You're lucky we didn't shoot your dumbass. This is a bit of a dumbass calling the kettle dumbass situation. You ladies were the ones shooting at something you couldn't identify. Eris was just minding his own business and being very non-threatening. Uh, what's happening? If you find your characters asking this question a lot, do a few rewrites until your plot makes any f***ing sense. They've been planning this for over a year now. The right arm has also mastered the dark arts of vague vagaries. What's going on with her? I don't know. Surely all of these people have seen someone succumb to the zombie flare virus before and would recognize it instantly. Please, okay? I told you that you could help. Unkeepable promises. Hello, Thomas. What? You're telling me. You gave me the coordinates of every wicked compound, trial, and lab. I'm still gonna send them for making me wait through a little over four hours of this shit for someone to actually give Thomas a straight answer. It looks like she was able to make the fancy Kool-Aid without stringing Thomas up to an alien type tube apparatus. Couldn't the immune just be required to donate blood every once in a while? But that's the catch, isn't it? She'll always need more. This is a dumb f***ing argument. Did these scientists not know that the human body produces more blood after you take it from its source? Or did all the scientists and doctors that understand basic chemistry die in the solar flares? Also, there are tons of chronic conditions that require people to take meds basically every day. Just treat the zombie antidote like insulin. You know she can't come with us, right? Why the hell not? Can't you just keep shooting her up with Thomas juice, and if worse comes to worse, make sure she doesn't bite anyone? Understand what? Why I did it. How on earth was she able to contact them? She must have sent a carrier pigeon in a deleted scene. How do they know those barrels aren't filled with fuel? Might be a good idea to hide anywhere else in such an explosion-filled scenario. Also, the guy standing in the flatbed of a truck behind a large gun is not getting shot at. Mary! Mary! Everyone is surprised that Jansen just shot Mary, even though he was standing right behind Ava in plain sight. Only we, the viewer, had this dramatic pan to reveal him holding the gun. Jorge with the truck ex machina. Everyone survives this. Stay in the f***ing truck! I made a promise to mean, huh? I wouldn't leave him behind. I have to go after him. Another aggressive, divergent level setup for a third, presumably two-part sequel. 
The maze is one thing, but you kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. What do you remember about Wicked? Balake, where is Balake at? There's no, no Balake here today. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! I know what a TV dinner feels like. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. We're here. Guns. Lots of guns. Hey, where's Teresa? She went up there. Sir!